So we are working on graphing rational equations. We know that word rational means ratio, and we outlined the steps of this in the introduction video. We covered how to find the y-intercept. We covered how to find the x-intercept. So now we are wanting to talk about how to find the domain in vertical asymptotes. Before we actually talk about that specifically, let's review some things. So the first definition that we need to review is what is actually the domain. Well, the domain talks about every single x value that we can have for that function. And those x values, of course, have to make sense. Now, since we're focusing specifically on rational equations, ratios, or fractions, what the thing is that we cannot have in the domain is we cannot have anything divided by 0. If you remember back, if you have a fraction with 0 in the denominator, that gives you something undefined. So if that happens for a specific x value, then our domain is not defined for that specific x value. Now, when that happens, that gives us a asymptote. Okay, So what does that actually mean, an asymptote? An asymptote is kind of what I call a follow the leader line. Okay? It's drawn by a dotted line, but it's not actually part of the graph. It's going to be what the graph follows. So we can see a couple of images down here where the blue is actually my graph and the red dotted line is my asymptote. And we can see that eventually your graph is going to get closer and closer and closer to the asymptote. So we can have different versions of these asymptotes. We can have a vertical asymptote, which obviously follows a vertical dotted line, a horizontal asymptote, same thing, horizontal dotted line, or even a oblique, or sometimes this is called a slanted asymptote. So going back to the first definition here of domain, what happens when we have an x value that is divided by 0 that cannot be represented by part of the domain. Well, that gives us a vertical asymptote. So again, it's a vertical line, and this becomes when our domain of something is not defined. And since we are in the rational function, that's because we have 0 in the denominator. So we can see down here, to find the vertical asymptote, we actually just do that by setting our denominator equal to 0. Now, something very specific to know about vertical asymptotes only, this does not apply to horizontal or oblique asymptotes, is a graph absolutely cannot cross a vertical asymptote. If you're trying to draw a graph and you see something that's crossing the vertical asymptote, that means you've made an error or something tricky is happening with the graph. So you're going to have to investigate further. Okay, moving on to how to find the vertical asymptote. We said we do it by setting our denominator equal to zero. And since this is a vertical line, the format that our answer is going to be in is in the vertical line format where x is equal to a specific number. So do not put these answers in ordered pair format because those are points. We want it in, obviously, a line format. So in this example here, if we're trying to find our vertical asymptote, we do it by just setting our denominator for x squared minus 3 equal to 0. And then we solve it using all of those solving equation techniques that we've learned so far. So we do this one by isolating the x, since I only have one of them. I move my 3 to the other side, gives me 4x squared is equal to 3. Move my 4 to the other side, which gives me x squared is equal to 3 fourths. To isolate my square, I force in a square root. Whenever I do that, I force in a positive and negative. Simplifying this here, this gives me x equals both positive and negative. I can separate my root out here, and I definitely want to do this in this example because I can simplify it. I cannot simplify the square root of 3, but on the bottom, square root of 4 gives me 2. So I actually have two vertical asymptotes in this example, and I should because my denominator was a degree 2. The first one is positive root 3 over 2, and the second one is negative root 3 over 2. 
And to graph these, I graph these as vertical dotted lines at those specific values here. And we'll see how to graph that once we get into the actual graphing video that we'll see here in just the next couple ones. So this is where I'm going to stop this video. And in the next video, I'm going to move on to horizontal and oblique asymptotes, how to find those and how those help us with the end behavior of the graph.